Hey there. Hanging out down in San Jose, and I came down here to get my residence permit. I'm now a green card holder in Mexico. Don't worry, Mexico, it's only temporary. So I came down here basically a week ago and started the, the in Mexico process. And I wanted to give you kind of a background of what I've been going through to get uh, residency here. First of all, why would somebody want to get residency down in Mexico? Well, simple fact is you can come and go easy. If you plan on spending a lot of time down here, you kind of have to have residency. They used to allow people to come and go and spend more time on that 180 day visa, pop back out for a day, come back down, but they're cracking down on that. I suspect the primary reason is you need no proof of income for that residency visa. I mean, sorry, for the tourist visa, you need no proof of income. You come down here for 180 days and get out. However, nowadays for a residency, if you want to live down here, they've really jumped up the game. Google these numbers don't rely on me for these because they're constantly changing. But basically, if you want to come down and get a temporary residency permit down here in Mexico, you need $2,600 a month in income. You can have that anyway, but you have to prove six months of income. Can you work down here? I think you can have a job down here. I don't really pay attention to what you need to do to work down here in Mexico because I have no desire or interest in working uh, for a Mexican company or making my living in Mexico. Uh, I make my living in the U.S. I can do it from anywhere, and that's what I do. So $2,600 in monthly income or $43,200, $300 in the bank savings over the every month for the last year. So that's a reasonable bar for a lot of people. If you want to have permanent residence, you need $4,350 a month in income, $4,350 a month in income, and or $170,000 in the bank for the last 12 months. So that's a substantial bar. Now you can, if you're retired, just jump right to permanent residency if you got that much money and your 401k counts, um, but you have to prove that you have some sort of income stream from a pension. I tried to do that, they asked if I had a pension. I didn't, so I couldn't get permanent residency right away. The law says you have to have the savings or a monthly pension. A lot of counselors say you need both because you need to prove you're retired. And I couldn't prove retired because, well, I'm not. So I did a temporary, which is fine. It's a year, then you can think, think you can do a three year one after that, and then you can do permanent. You can walk up the line to that. So I'm down here. So what I did was um, I looked at some different services, and you can Google for like services to help you get residency in Mexico, and there's plenty of them. But I decided to go it alone. That was fine. Uh, the form in uh, the US to do residency is, is not daunting in any way, shape, or form. It's a page and a half. It's in English or Spanish. I did the English one. You fill it out. You get gather your six month proof of income or your year's worth of savings. I did savings because it was easier. And then just uh, go down to the Mexican council. You don't even need a um, notarized or much less apostolized. You just get these documents, fill out the form, make an appointment with your local consulate, go down there. Now you really want to call that local council because each consulate around is their own little fiefdom with their own rules, their own procedures. Portland was super easy. They were great. You look at their website, there's an email address, mail them say you want an appointment. They send you the form, they tell you what you need because each one has a little different on requirements. Uh, this is Mexico, you know, there's nothing, nothing's perfect in any uh, bureaucracy. So um, I made an appointment with them, it took a little longer because I tried to do it around Christmas time, which is stupid. And then when they finally got back to me, I was down in Ecuador, blah, blah, blah. So it, it, about a month and a half later, I was able to go and get my appointment, checked over the documents. They'd already pre-screened them all. They looked at them, wanted a couple updates um, because it had been a couple months and I went down with the updated forms knowing they'd probably want to have the latest financials. Walked down there, they approved it, done, go to Mexico. You've got 90, no, six months, I think, after you get your residency visa that you can go down and get your residency card. So you do for one part in the U.S., you go down and do the other part. I'd only read about the residency visa part, which is super easy. English form no you know no notary or anything it's super easy but when you go down to Mexico there are several forms you need to fill out they aren't in English they're in Spanish and if your Spanish isn't good like mine you're probably gonna need some help and I wholeheartedly recommend you get some help
Or <laughs> that works too. So I got a little help. I went to the immigration office with a translator. I'll put the link for the person that helped me with the forms. There's lots of people. I don't want to recommend any one person, but it, the, the folks that did my forms, they're really helpful. They made the appointments. I'm going to reference them in the, in the description, but there's lots of places. Um, this group doesn't have a spot in Santo de, de Cabo, so they couldn't go with me to the appointment. Other people do, and they will go with you to the appointment. I grabbed a buddy of mine who speaks English and Spanish, and he went there with me, and it all worked out great. Uh, so I had no problems, really. I, I was a little nervous about going to immigration because I was feared they'd be like the DMV in Oregon. Uh, they move a lot more efficiently than the DMV in Oregon, at least the one here in San Jose. Popped in there. Uh, the people I was working with don't work with the San Jose uh, immigration. They recommended I go in the day before or before I go to the appointment, get a payment form, go pay, because you have to pay at a bank in cash, in pesos. Um, so I went to the immigration the, uh, a couple days before to get that form, and they looked at me like I was nuts. It's like, your appointment's not till Friday. Why are you here now? And I explained via my translator and they said no we don't do that here just come back you know come a little early to your appointment and that's what I did I went back on Friday I went a couple hours early went up they looked over my forms yeah this looks pretty good go pay your money there's a couple banks across the street easy to do you run over they know the banks are expecting this come over with the payment form you, you pay I think it was uh, I should tell you the fee I think it was like two hundred seventy three dollars US uh, for the Visa card and $45, $48 to apply in Portland. So really, you know, nothing as far as costs here. And went back across the street, they went over the forms, had a little thing with my address, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, that was it. I actually walked out. I hear horror stories of people waiting months, uh, even with the new computer system, to people waiting like two weeks. I walked out with my green card. I was there for like a, about two hours to, at all so the you, you know I hate to recommend a bureaucracy but it seems like the folks down here in uh, Santo de de Cabo it's actually in Cabo San Lucas's immigration office they got their poo together and they got this done efficiently um, I'm at an Airbnb so it's you know it's fine the Airbnb doesn't really like to give out addresses down here in Mexico because the buildings in Santo de de Cabo and this is a Santo de de Cabo thing they really don't have addresses. It's a little weird. So Airbnb gave me an address for the place when I uh, booked it. Okay. Uh, basically, it says get address. You click on it, goes to maps, shows you an address. I'm like, great, perfect. That's an address determined by Google Maps. It's actually not the Airbnb address. So watch out for that. You need to find somebody you can work with down here, the Airbnb host, because I needed to have an electric bill or some sort of utility bill. And they were kind enough at this Airbnb to give me um, an electric bill. So I took that with me and the address was on the electric bill. It's kind of funny if you're only lived in the US. Um, the address on the electric bill is actually a cross street. You know, we needed a, a formal address on the forms. So we sort of extrapolated, I sort of missed the street uh, that was different from Google Maps. I explained it to the guy um, through my translators and drew him a little picture of the layout and he took it. You might not get that lucky. You might not be careful about the addressing on this. But, the, you know, the guy was friendly. Well, I wouldn't say friendly. He, he was efficient. He was understanding and helpful. Um, he did crack a smile a couple times. So uh, that was the one snag I had. I would suggest you be careful about that address and try to get the forms correct to match a utility bill, which means you got to find somebody you can work with down here. Um, the Airbnb that I'm staying at, there's another video on this channel that reviews it, the San Jose... Uh, San Jose del Cabo video. Peek at that, you can see who they were. They worked with me. It's a great digital nomad place, so you can peek at that. Overall, the experience was great. You know, working with the folks up in Portland Consulate, they were nice. They didn't let me hop on the, you know, that uh, permanent residency. I, I, I would have liked to because I keep bumping the numbers every year, so I kind of wanted to do it because I had the savings in line for it, but that's okay. Well, I'll have to draw this out for four years. It's no problem. And uh, the folks down here were efficient and um, helpful and almost friendly, which, you know, it's a bureaucracy. We can only go so far. So, again, 
I'm not going to give a lot of specifics here. Google it, find your own experience, but I wholeheartedly recommend you work with um, somebody. You can go to like um, Mex Experience, uh, Mexi Law. There's places that have lots of references to folks who do this for a living down here. You pay them 500 bucks, they do all the work for you. And if, unless you're Spanish, it's good, you're going to need them. Or at least find a buddy that can translate for you like I did. So that's it. I just thought that to be interesting and I was uh, pretty excited to have my uh, green card here. So uh, I encourage you to try it. It's not difficult. It's um, a little time consuming, but it's not too daunting and uh, good luck.